Welcome to the second of my teardown videos. This one has been humorously titled Inadvisable Things to Do with a Microwave Oven Transformer. Uh, this is the transformer in question, which, as you can see, I've already had one attempt unsuccessfully at um, disassembling. What happened was uh, I saw a video on YouTube, which I will probably link to, um, that showed how to crack these welds. Now, unfortunately, the welds would not crack, which is probably because this transformer is built slightly differently, or the welds are just thicker. It was a slower day when they made it. But what you need to do is cut these welds here to disassemble the transformer. Now, to do this, the original video suggested a hammer and screwdriver. That didn't work. But, with typical overkill, this should work. Let's see, shall we? with this, uh, assuming you can now hear me again, the idea with this is to remove the weld but remove as little metal as possible. Now hopefully, I'm seeing a crack now which I didn't see before. I can see there's a corner of the weld I've missed. Not a problem. Prepare your ears again. I must point out, this table is one that I got given free. It is not a family heirloom. There we go. You see? The transformer core has now split. I should explain, I suppose, why I'm doing this. It's in order to get the windings out of the microwave transformer, either to reuse them for something else, or to rewind the secondary. For those of you unfamiliar with a microwave transformer, this is the primary, which takes in your mains line voltage, either 120 or in the UK 240 volts, across these terminals. This is the filament winding, which supplies a very low voltage for the filament of the magnetron, which is basically a large valve or vacuum tube. Uh, it's very high power, but it basically is the same as the, the same basic function as a, as a valve that was in radios, you have the filament and an anode and cathode. I will be corrected on that, I'm sure, by valve experts. I do know, but I can't be bothered to go into it, quite frankly. Um, it's not relevant. This is the filament winding, is the main thing, and the filament is connected to one side, in use, is connected to the DC side of the high voltage circuit, which means it needs to be well insulated and it's indeed packed in with the high voltage and separated by a gap from the mains primary side. Uh, it's insulated with heat resistant wire and this is the 2000 volt or 2100 volt depending on the model of microwave secondary winding. One side is clamped to earth or ground here, which we will in fact break off because it's not needed to be connected to that. Uh, this, by the way, is, is a useful point to be able to determine whether the wire is made of aluminium or aluminium or copper. Um, you can do that by simply blow torching or propane torching the uh, wire and see if it melts. We'll see what temperature it melts at. I have my slightly deadly torch here. May as well go for it. 
Right, you can see that's melting, but the bead that melted has turned black, which generally means it's copper. It's now cold again. Yeah, that's copper. That is a decent quality transformer. The uh, cheaper transformers tend to use aluminium wiring for the windings, which saves lots of money in the manufacture and results in crappy product quality, frankly. It shouldn't do, because aluminium is a very good substance to use. But the problem is, the companies that do this are doing it to save money, so it's more a symptom rather than the cause of the low quality. Probably explain that a little better. But anyway, now what I found is that we have to remove the base of the transformer because one of the other welds is hidden under here. And this transformer, as you can see, is rusty because it's been outdoors for a year and a half, and then it was in the attic next to the hot water pipes, drying out for another year and a half. So it's been three years at least since I took the microwave apart. Anyway, we will now chop this piece here. So, mind your ears again. is remarkably unsuccessful. <laughs> it should, however, be successful. What I've got to do, now you see that's not being successful. What I have to do is try to separate the base from the transformer laminations, which has been done with a nice neat weld bead. So mind your ears again. separated the base from the laminations, which is what I was aiming for. Um, might need to grind a little more metal off, I'm not sure. You don't actually need the base on the transformer. It would have been nice to keep it, but I can't be bothered. I've just built my own and tack welded on. See, this is... You know, see, that's still being difficult down there. <laughs> Mind your ears again. welding on this was a remarkably good welder. And there goes the tip of my screwdriver, which is why you always use an old screwdriver. Doesn't matter, I've got hundreds of these screwdrivers. I found them in a toolbox that I bought at a junk sale once. Oh, I see, there's a bead in the corner. There was a bead in the corner. Now, see, it's bending there. You see, it's... that is a remarkably strong weld. Less than perfect weld would have given up by now. That's been bent. It's a very light weld, but it is very high quality. 
hats off to the people who did that welding. But now, should be able to pry that down. There we go. That's the transformer taken apart. This is now junk, recycling, however you want to put it. Now this is where it gets interesting. What you can do, we, as you can see, decide on the winding you like the least. Uh, I wish to keep the primary winding here, which is the 240 volt in the case of the UK. Um, I'm not fussed particularly about the centre winding, so I will put my screwdriver levering in between the centre winding and the high tension. What I'm trying to do, I think this is going to end up as scrap copper to be honest because it's rusted in where it was left outside for so long, it's rusted together. And there's, so you can see this rust stains on there. There's very little chance, I fear, of getting this out in one piece. But we will still try. The way I'm going to try is by using the screwdriver backwards. Using the rubber handle. To shift things. No, it's not wanting to shift, unfortunately. Let me try down here. This, is, this video is probably mostly my arm in the way now. And bits of tools falling on the floor and things like that. Makes for a professional video, doesn't it? Anyway, yes, I can see it's torn part of the insulation off. But it is going, so depending on how much damage has been done, it may be reusable. So you've just literally got to tease this out of here. See, it's the rusting has stuck the, la the windings to the laminations. But, there we go, yes, see the rust has stuck it, but... Although it peeled that lamination apart and peeled the insulation off, there's not actually any damage to the insulation on that winding pack. So what I will do is strip that off, re-insulate it, and that will be that. Now this here is the um, magnetic shunt that is in a microwave transformer. This is the bit that causes it to be current limited, which is advisable for safety in a microwave. But normally, in any other form of transformer, that's unwanted. And is, I will probably be reusing this transformer as an extra low voltage transformer. I will be hacksawing this out, or not hacksawing, I'll be knocking these out like this. They are, this transformer is well rusted together, so it does not wish to come apart. You can see how much that wanted to come apart. And in here there's also some copper shielding. If I just moved the camera, that was, it's going to make the video look even more professional, isn't it? Uh, here is the low voltage winding, the filament. Again, this would have all come out in one piece originally, had the transformer not been rusted solid. I have several other microwaves to dismember, so I might do a better quality version of this video later. That wire is uh, heat resistant. These clips simply hold the wire in position. You can take them off and smash them to pieces. It is good length there, a couple of metres maybe, no, maybe a metre actually, of um, high temperature wire, which is quite handy in itself to keep. It's fairly high current. Um, I'm not sure what the current is, what the rating of that wire is actually. It's 
probably several amps. And then you've got the high tension winding here, which is rated at two and a half thousand, no, not two and a half thousand, about 2,000 volts. Now I was originally going to try to keep this wire, but uh, the state of this transformer, this is basically copper scrap. But that's fine. As I said, I have several others. But let's see if I can show you how the winding is made. Turn it round. Right, it should now be loose enough that I can knock it while holding the core like this. And it should eventually, <laughs> famous last words, it should eventually just drop off. You see there's uh, pieces of glue that have come apart. I assure you they don't put it together like this in the factory. Except for some cheap Chinese microwaves, I suspect they do put them together like this. There we go. There is a rather heavy lump of laminated iron. The reason it's laminated is because it's alternating current. You don't want it short circuiting. Uh, remove the paper. It's actually mica. Maybe you can see that there. That is uh, mica wrap with paper overwind. That mica is quite handy. Heat resistant. It's related. Um, I believe to asbestos. I could be wrong. It's not asbestos. Don't, I don't wish to start a panic. Not that my pathetic little videos would do so, but uh, no, it's related. It's similar, but without any of the danger because it doesn't form dust. It forms little slivers. That is the high tension winding, and that is definitely solid copper. So to those of you who are of a recycling frame of mind, or selling for scrap frame of mind, should I say, this would probably be of great interest. And to those of us of an electrical disposition, it is useful as a source of copper magnet wire. Fairly thick, actually. I'd say that's probably 30 gauge, American wire gauge. Maybe thicker. I don't know. I'm not totally familiar with the American wire gauge system. But as you can see, the end that was earthed or grounded to the frame here, that end is, in fact, on the inside. So there's a minimum potential across from here to the core. So the uh, insulation is under the least stress possible. And the high tension terminal is on the outside. So this winding is in layers and is built up from the inside out, obviously. But the inside is ground. The outside remains the live and has a quarter inch blade connector on it. Uh, one of these. Actually, they will quite happily plug on to there. Uh, I don't think they were meant to be plugged on there. In <laughs> but yes, that is basically... Probably the least advisable thing to do with a microwave oven transformer that doesn't involve connecting it to the mains.